Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's case I'm going to be talking to you about is Brittany Brasher. At approximately 1.40am on November the 17th, 2009, 22-year-old Brittany Brasher's car had crashed on a dead-end street in Denver, in Colorado. Denver resident Steve Sanchez was visiting a friend when he heard a loud bang outside in the street. He jumped up, went outside, saw the accident scene and immediately called 911. Sanchez described the scene to the 11 operator. A woman was in a driver's seat of the crashed car and it was a man holding her in his arms. He was shaking her as he kept saying, Brittany, Brittany. The man cradled Brittany in his arms, was on her again, off again, boyfriend, Robert, Robbie Walters. Brittany and Robbie met while stationed in Iraq as members of the United States Air Force the night of the wreck. Robbie was wearing his seatbelt and survived the crash. Brittany had not worn her seatbelt. At first it looked like a young, bright, attractive and athletic Brittany seeing Hugh and her brother, John, had been a victim of a tragic car accident. Things didn't add up for Brittany's father, by Brasher, when he heard Brittany had not been wearing a seatbelt on the night of the crash. There was a red flag that went up for him. She would never move a car without putting her seatbelt on, never. Investigators, including homicide detective Troy Biscard, were troubled by the crash scene. It looked staged. Why was a car found at the end of a dead-end residential street where Brittany and Rory lost? Medical examiner John Carver also had questions about how Brittany died. His autopsy revealed that she had not had any significant injuries to her limbs, internal organs, neck, spinal cord, skull or brain. The injuries Brittany did have were not what Dr. Carver had expected to see. His examination revealed the pinpoint hemorrhage on the skin of her face and surrounding her eyes. These were telltale signs that she may have been strangled. Strangulation was hard for Dr. Carver to confirm because Brittany was born with a piece of cartilage in her throat. Cartilage that is often crushed in the strangulation with no physical evidence to prove that she was strangled, the medical examiner had no choice but to list Brittany's cause of death as undetermined. Undetermined meant no ruling of homicide. Still, Detective Biscard felt that Brittany's death was not an accident. The more he learned about Robbie Walters, the more convinced he was that Brittany was murdered. Brittany Brasher was an athletic young woman who played on an all-girls football league on the night of the accident. She went to a nightclub for a photo shoot with the rest of her friends, which was her teammates. Robbie ended up coming to the photo shoot even though he and Brittany had broken up yet again. Friend and teammate Brittany Austin Goyne told 48 Hours that at one point during the photo shoot, all the girls took their tops off. They posed strategically with props in order to appear sexy without really showing anything. Austin Goyne told 48 Hours that after Brittany took off her top, Robbie Walters started to cry and took photos of Brasher with his cell phone. Detective Biscard then discovered early in his investigation that Robbie Walters was married and that he had been arrested after a physical fight with Brittany. While examining Brittany's phone, police found a profanity-laced message from Robbie. In that message, Walter said that he hoped that Brittany would die. Detective Biscard wanted to talk to Robbie Walter's wife, Elena, but he knew that he couldn't force her to talk to him. Then four months into the investigation, Biscard got word that Robbie had been in a big fight with his wife. Looking for any possible shred of new evidence, he gave Elena a call. He said that once she started talking, she never stopped. Elena Walters told Detective Biscard that Robbie had confessed repeatedly to her that he had killed Brittany. She also told Biscard that she secretly made over a dozen cell phone recordings of her conversations with Robbie. 
In these recordings, he gave graphic and precise details of how he beat and strangled Brittany. Dr. John Carver, the medical examiner, told 48 Hours that Robbie's confessions explained the things that was puzzling him at the conclusion of Brittany's autopsy. Her injuries fit very well with what Robbie's description of how he punched and choked her. Elena Walter's information was all Dr. Carver needed to change the manner of Brittany Brush's death from undetermined to homicide. Three days after talking with Elena, Detective Biscard arrested Robbie Walters. Prosecutors Helen Morgan and Phil Geagle now had plenty of ammunition to build the case. At trial, they used Robbie's own recorded words against them. They theorised that on the night that she died, Brittany and Robbie got into a argument. After this photo shoot, he lost his temper and he had killed her. Robbie Walters was convicted and sentenced to life without parole. At Robbie's sentencing, Brittany's sister Sarah Senior addressed the court on behalf of her family. Despite being nervous, she wanted everyone in the courtroom to hear her memories of her beloved sister. Okay then everyone, so that is the case of Brittany Brasher. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell and I see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.